Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't know how I was going to do this. The devil been attacking me with, you know, these things that's going on. Everybody in this campus trying to bring diseases and infirmities and everything else. But we must press on. And I advise Pastor to spray this mic when he comes back. <laughs> I'll spray it for him. <laughs> Amen. How's everybody this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God be the glory. Um, this is a teaching that's going to be something that we're all familiar of because it all happened to us. It's something that when we was in the world, we didn't, um, some of us probably was in prison, some of us probably in the dope holes, some of us were just by ourselves. But we was calling for help. And we didn't know how. And some of us didn't know how to call for help. Some of us not, wasn't raised in the church and knew the name of Jesus. And some of us just didn't know. But God caused somebody to come in life. Each and every one of us, while we was out there in the world, somebody came to you one time and told you about Jesus. They told you or, or, or tried to direct you. And sometimes you was in a rush. You said, I ain't got time for that. But they prayed for you. They intercede for you. When you couldn't do it on your own. When you couldn't think about it. You know, the Lord was showing me something when we was praising. And when we had our hands up and we had our hands like this, he reminded me of him being on the cross. He surrendered everything when he came on the, on the cross. Because when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but let your will be done. And he had to die there to get to that surrender for us. And as he spread him out, he was giving his father glory for us. He showed me that just now. And it's deep because you got to understand something. He did it all for us. For us. He put himself to the side. He said, I'm coming after you. And thank God we wasn't born in the Old Testament. Man, we would all be dead. <laughs> Stone him! Because <laughs> I believe all y'all was rebellious. <laughs> I know I had my rebellious side. I could look at Isaiah and see it. <laughs> no! <laughs> Amen. So, um, praise God. But we're going to talk about seeing your calling. Seeing your calling. And your calling is not going to be everything that you think it is. You know, a lot of people think, I, I'm going to get... I, God called me, now I'm going to get me a Mercedes Benz, I'm going to get this and get that, and everything's going to be handy and orky-dorky. <laughs> but when you get called in Christ, it's a whole different suffering. You know, we suffered for the, sick, for the devil, right? And we used to use drugs and alcohol or some people use money, some people use the flesh, some people use other activities to satisfy them through their suffering, to drown out what they thought they was drowned out, the voice. But really, the voice was really entertaining. They was entertaining the voice through their suffering, doing the things that the voice told them to do. But as we walk in Christ, we do not go after that voice of, that brings suffering. Our suffering brings Glory to the Father. It brings a change within our lives. It brings us a maturity. It brings us to stand up for something that is real. Because the things that we did of old was false. It was a flawed belief system that was bringing more bondage to us. Anybody remember those days? Amen, because I ain't had that plan to be saying. But God knows. We got to remember where we came from. 
Because every time that things rise up, we get so ticked off and say, I can't do this no more. I'm done. Okay, you're done. Where are you going? <laughs> Where are you really going? Because there's two sides. You flip the coin. If you got heads, you, you got Christ. But if you got tails, where are you going? You're not the head no more. You're the tail. And what, what stinks back there? <laughs> hmm? A lot of people have to say, excuse me, don't they? <laughs> Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 1. Today we're talking about, about seeing your calling, but through this calling, you're going to see through the suffering. Because everybody thinks that it's orky dorky and dandy, but there's good benefits in the calling. But you've got to fight for it. It's just not going to be laid out and hand out to you, because Satan is not going to just say, oh, he's called, I can't leave, I'm going to leave him alone now. No, there's going to be more of a force coming after you because you once was his and he wants you back because he came to set the, to set the not to set the captives free but he came to set the captives into bondage because he was born in this in sin he was born in sin so all our lives as we was growing up and everything we was unrighteous we was walking in sinful nature you know, have you ever seen people in a sinful nature? And how about believers that's in a sinful nature? Does they say they're Christ, but you don't see no Christ in them? Their act, the things that they say, their deeds, their thoughts, their behaviors. It's nothing that's edifying. So you see that, but worse than you see the, the people that's in the world. Because, you know, people in the world, they'll tell you quick. Yeah, Christian ain't supposed to act like that. They know how you're supposed to act. And they judging you by standard. By the standard, but they don't know how to do. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 1, verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the what? Me. <laughs> me. How many people put their hand and say, me. <laughs> yeah, we was a fool to it. We was the black sheep. Some of you, how many was black sheep in the family? Me! <laughs> but God has chosen the foolish things of the world and put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame to the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and these things which are despised, God has chosen. Thank God he looked down and he's seen your frail self, when you thought that nobody, nobody loves me. He was loving you then. He was loving you then. He loved you in your sin. Yeah. Yeah. He loved you when you thought that you wasn't being loved. Preparing for your call. And the things which are not, to bring nothing to the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. That, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. We have a calling, not of the world, of the flesh. 
And call means participate. That's what the call means. That you, he called you to participate to his plan. Now you participate because he called you. And then chosen means that you're faithful. He called us for his purpose and for his glory. And the world will come to attack us because you don't look like the world no more. How many times you have gone out to people and said, I've been saved. And they say to you, okay, let's see how long this is going to last. <laughs> and they try you. And they test you. They try to bring you back to the things that you once was of old and try to bring you back to it because they want discredit the save in you. Mm. God called us righteous and the world will look at our past because that's all they can remember is your past. They can't see no future in you. You know, even after living in this thing for years, I go, when I go home, and, you know, they know my old nature. You know, I'll tell them, well, I'm going to go to the store, and I'll be right back. You know what they be thinking? Yeah, he'll be right back. Yeah, I don't think he'll be back because the day that I know, he'll say one thing and do another. But as you practice to do the right things of righteousness, it just becomes you. So when you come back and you see them, they're looking at you. You know, some of them, they look surprised because you're back. And otherwise, you just ignore it because that's not you no more. You already know who you are in Christ. It doesn't matter no more. It don't matter what people think about you if you're right with Christ. Amen? And you just keep moving forward so you can be a light upon them so now they can watch you. Amen? Amen? God called us righteous and the world will look at our past. God does not associate with self. He don't associate with it. But with his sons and daughters, that's who he associates with. It's with us. Our death is constant. Remember that. Our death is what? How many times you said, man, I got, I got freed from that. Oh, there's another test coming. Is another test coming. You got to understand something. I always look at it like fractions. You know how you see a pie? Here's pride. Here's a pie of pride. Okay, you took, dealt with this fraction of pride. But you haven't dealt with all the other areas that still yet to come. Because we're not complete until we complete in him because we got to have him to be complete in us to do it so when that test comes back if you're not in Christ when it comes because he knows when to test you <laughs> he knows when you're vulnerable and knows how, how to say okay I'm good at it yeah I'm good I got this now he say okay I'll wait <laughs> and he tests you when you least expect it and you say man I thought I had it that's how God is. We must deny ourselves. We must pick up our cross and follow. Now, righteousness, God made all of our wrongs right. That's what righteousness did. He made your wrongs right. Amen? Let God fix the past and you prepare for the future so that he can be in it. Redemption is a release from slavery, from space, time, and sin. That's what redemption does. It releases you from slavery. It releases you from space, time, and sin. We are born in a new realm of life with no end. That means we have become eternal. Amen. Let's go to first Peter four. Y'all getting this? Amen. So you understand that your righteousness, right? 
God made your wrongs right. You redeemed redemption. He, he, he changed the, the matter of a release from you from slavery. So you're not a slave to the things of your past. That's what, he, that's what redeem means, right? He redeemed you to be free from slave, slavery. Amen? First Peter 4, verse 1. Oh, I'm not there. Okay. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh. For the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime enduring the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, reveries, drinking parties, and abomination, idolatry. In regard to these, they think it is strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation speaking evil of you. Like I said before, when you get saved, people are going to start trying you, testing you. They're going to think that, and then if you don't follow them, what do they do when you don't follow them? They start talking bad about you. Oh, man, you ain't nothing. That, that I remember what you used to do. Amen? So when they do those things, you just stand on the truth. Because you got to understand, they have not been saved. So you know that in that they're speaking, there's a demon there. There's a demon there. So you recognize the spirit, and you could come against it. You ain't got to come and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Now you're starting to fire. But you can say, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. That spirit hears you. I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. I do not condemn what he says. I do not accept what he says. And Lord, fill me. So I can overcome these things. And keep your eyes on the promise. And that's him. Amen? Amen. People will try to pull you back. Also, voices will try to pull you back. The enemy himself. Oh, man. You remember, you ain't got to do this. Yeah, that's the voice of the enemy. Because the enemy wants you to be a quitter. He wants you to quit. He wants you to quit on your life so he can get you back and do what he needs to do. But you got to remember, when he left, he went to dry, dry grounds. He wants to go back where water is at so he can dry you up so he can live and rest in you. Ah, I'm back at home. Now you're walking around stumbling and bumbling and fumbling over everything because that's what he wants. Amen? How many of that has happened to anybody before? Do you remember how sour puss you was? <laughs> like a dry prune. <laughs> God exposing everything in us to put more of himself in us. So he wants to expose everything that we need to be exposed of so he can make room for more of him. Because if you're honest with yourself, you will be saying, oh, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. you be wanting, Lord, come and help me. That's all he wants. He wants you to cooperate. Remember, when he called you, he wants you to cooperate. Amen? Amen. Let's go to 2 Peter 1. No, I'm good. Thank you. 2 Peter's 1. And verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us things that pertain to life. And godliness through the knowledge of him and who called us by glory and virtue. 
by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also from the very reason given all diligence, add your faith virtue to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound you, will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brothers, be even more diligent to make your call an election sure. For if you do these things, you will never, 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 never stumble. For so as an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we do these things, you will never stumble. It's easy to read those things. But when it's time to do those things, the only way you can do that is with a born-again mindset. That means your mind has to be on the mind of Christ. So when things come up, you don't look at the matter before you. You look at Christ. And as you look at Christ, you can overcome the matter. Because you know he's standing before you. Amen? Romans 8. And, you know, sometimes we're going to slip. We're going to say something. <laughs> but you repent quickly. Be quick. Now, the person might not forgive you, but that's on them. But you can forgive yourself, and you can forgive that person, and you ask God for forgiveness, and keep moving. You can't be idle. You got to keep on moving. You got to fight when you don't feel like fighting. That's when the fight is, is the best, because then when you get up to the fight when you don't feel like fighting, that's when you say, man. It feels good when you get free, don't it? It feels good. You was called to this. You was called to worship. You was called, called to love your enemies. You was called to that. Yeah, I can't stand all you brothers to change them words. <laughs> Lord, bless them. And then when they get blessed, don't get mad because they got blessed. <laughs> you spoke it in. <laughs> you don't know that blessing might come back at you. You don't know. You don't know what God plan is waiting for you in the end. You don't know that they might turn around. They might got blessed with a million dollars and God all of a sudden, they was wicked and everything else, and God all of a sudden changed their heart and saved them. And now they want to sow into your ministry. You never know what God has planned. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Where are we at? Romans 8? 8, 8 uh, 28. That's because we can't be led by the flesh. You got to be led by the Spirit. And we know that all things work together, what? For the good. To those who what? Love God. To those who what? Are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Everything is working for his good. It does not matter where you are. Because you got to understand something. Where in some places we are, we think we were good, and everybody else seen us as sinful, hypocritical, and everything else. 
Just because we think we, we're okay, that not mean that everybody else sees us okay. Amen. Amen? God is preparing, but you must stay connected to receive the benefits. Amen. He's preparing. You got to stay connected, though. If you get disconnected, guess what? All things are lost. You stay connected, all things are becoming new each and every day. Matter of fact, it's not each and every day. How about each and every second? Because it takes a second to make a wrong choice. It also takes a second to make the right choice. Amen? Amen. Let's go to James 1. Verse, James 1, verse 2. Here we go into these areas. You ready? No, I'm good. I'm not. I'm not. It's just some stuffed up. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. It's not going down my back. It's just there. (laughs) If it was, I'd be coughing. No cough, please. (laughs) James 1, verse 2. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into what? Various trials. Do a believer go through trials? Do a person that's saved go through trials? Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Man, don't, don't go around like rocker, snacker, rinker, knocker. <laughs> Let's call it joy. Okay, Father, I see what's going on, but I trust in you. Amen. Amen. Knowing that the testing of your what? Faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. It's funny how Pastor said, how many of y'all like suffering? Because, you know, before I used to say, man, I don't want to go through no suffering and everything. But when he showed us what suffering brings, now he said, how many of you like suffering? We all go like this. <laughs> because it brings patience. It brings perseverance. It brings promises that comes from the Father. Amen? Amen? It is a time for endurance. We must be in the fight. You got to be in the fight or you'll become a casualty. You got to be in this fight. Because you're not in the fight, then the devil knows you're a wimp. We can't grow unless we die to circumstances. Because sometimes certain, some, some circumstances are just not going to change. And you have to agree with it that God got that there just to keep you humble. Because if it's not there, he knows that it might take you beyond yourself. Or, like my mom, my mom never seen the promise of me being saved. But I remember coming to that house and being high. And she looked at me and she said, the Lord promised me that you're going to be saved. And I'm looking at her, I see, but the Lord said it through her because it's stated here. But she never seen the promise. But she believed in it and she spoke it. And that thing, and that promise was manifested. Not in my time, because I didn't know what time it was. <laughs> but in his time, the manifestation came that I was called for a purpose. Amen? Amen. We must overcome any trial so that we can hear what he is speaking. So that the, because you got to understand something, the circumstances can't be bigger than God. Because God is always bigger than your circumstances. If you're hearing him. That's when you have to have the mind of Christ. When things are going on, you have to 
have the mind of Christ when things are, when are coming at you. Because you can't do this thing in the flesh. You have to do it through the anointing that breaks that yoke. Amen? Amen. Now let's go to um, 2 Corinthians 5. And the word says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That means you have been recovered. You have uh, been on his plan now. Now you are working it out. You have been reconsidered to do the things that is before him now. That is, that God was Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors. Yes, you. You are an ambassador of Christ. That's right. Now you, as long as you're walking in the mindset, you are an ambassador of Christ. Now you're able to come to the lost and tell them who Christ is. And then guess what? They're going to be watching you too. Who's Christ is? Who's Christ? Christ is in me. He's in me. I'm a new creation in Christ. Yes, me. I'm in Christ. I have the anointing. Yeah, watch me. Yeah. So as you're in the houses, watch each other as you watch yourself. Because as you're looking at each other, make sure you're in Christ as you're judging your other brother and sister. Make sure you're in Christ. Check your fruits out before you do anything. Am I right before I come before them? Look at yourself. See first. Get yourself right before you come to anybody else. Because you're supposed to be the ambassador. Amen? Don't walk in fear of it either. Because the devil will bring fear. He's good at bringing fear when you try to do the right things. Oh, man, it's like a wave, a strong wind comes in when you try to do the right thing. Fear will say, no, you can't do that. They're going to say something to you. But after you get done with what you had to do, you find out nothing happened. It didn't come out the way that it looked like. Because... He didn't want you to see your true identity because it will bring confidence. You will bring confidence in you and him. Amen? Although God were pleading through us, we implored you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. Amen? Amen. What does the righteousness mean? God made our wrongs right. So he made the righteousness of God in us. So he took our wrong and made it right. So they can't look at your past no more. They can look at you present to your future as you stay in Christ. You were called to this. This is what you called for. Nobody said it was going to be easy. It ain't supposed to be easy. It wasn't easy getting that dope, was it? When, we, when it was raining outside like it is now, it didn't stop you to go and get, your, get what you needed, did it? Huh? I remember the snow up, up north. It could be four foot of snow. I'm going to get it. You're going to follow my footsteps and then care if you want to try to catch me. You can follow my footsteps back all you want, but I'm going to do what I need to get done. We should have that same mindset for Christ. Amen. That nothing should stop us from doing what the will of God has for us to do. Nothing. Nothing. Amen. Let's go to Acts 1.
You know, when you're free, you can talk about your past because it has no power on you. You can use your past for a testimony. And you know how many people say, you? I can't see you like that. Boy, if you knew, <laughs> I'll have been all in your pockets. <laughs> you? Yes, me. Because I've been redeemed. You hear? I'm, I'm, I'm righteous now. Somebody came and changed me. I've been called now. And I fulfilled the calling. Now I'm walking in it. Amen? Amen. Acts 1 verse 8. Well, I didn't mean for everybody to go there, but we'll say it anyhow. It says, but you shall receive what? Power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? Witness to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That means you'll be walking in power, and you'll be a witness when you fulfill your calling. You'll be walking in power. That means you'll overcome anything that's before you. Amen? Let's go to Mark 16. We'll show you what else we're supposed to do. Mark 16. Mark 16, 16. Where it says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he do, who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. And in name they will cast out what? Demons. When you have power, you can cast out demons. You cast out demon in your own self. Pastor, pray for me. Pray for yourself. You got power. Amen. If you're practicing it, if you have the mindset of Christ, you have power to cast out that demon. Look in the mirror. Come out in the name of Jesus. I'm tired of you. Yeah. You know when you got a demon in you because everybody else knows. Huh? You leave a trail behind you. There's, there's somebody's arm, there's somebody's leg, there's somebody's brain. Because <laughs> your words are just, just, just killing everybody. Amen? Amen? They will take up servants and they drink anything deadly. It will lay, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That is for those who believe that has been called for his purpose. See your calling. See what you call for. You call for this. You we all getting prepared for when revival comes. Because it's coming. You're getting prepared. And there's more sects like us. We're not the only sect that God has that's preparing. He's not using all these giant churches that you believe that's being used. Some of these giant churches don't even know Jesus then left the church. Amen. But Jesus is using places like this to get us prepared. How, where else are you going to get teachings that are so powerful that pastor brings from the anointing that's coming fresh from heaven that blows your mind? Things that you didn't even know about before you got saved, before you was called. Things that you didn't know that you was in delusion about. And you thought it was real. And you thought you was going to die in that situation. And now you're walking in truth. 
but by walking in truth. You know how people say, if I told you the truth, you can't handle the truth if I give it to you. Some people can't handle it and they run from it because it hurts. It hurts to the place that certain areas that you thought nobody knew, he knew. And he's touching it. So he can take it. So you get free. Because as he's getting you free, he's getting you prepared to free others. So that you can go to see people and you can see them for who they are. You can remember where you was at. And you ain't got to be high and holy. But you can meet them. Right where they're at. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Romans 1. Romans 1. Because you got to understand, God has people assigned for you. So you have to get yourself prepared for your assignment. And if you fool the flesh, what you were assigned for can walk right by you and you miss what he had assigned for you. That's because you have to have the mind of Christ. Mind of Christ. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. That means we all have to use faith to endure, to fight, to stand. Because that is help our connection, don't it? Because without faith, you can't please him. So you have to have faith to stay connected, to stay in power, to walk it out of the calling that you have, because God can't have you doing anything if you don't believe, if you're not walking in the, the faithhood. Because you can't do it. You know, let me, let me, let me uh, show you what Jesus had to do. Jesus went back home. And he spoke the scriptures to these people. And they looked at him and said, is this the carpenter's son? Because they couldn't see him for what he was called for. They said, isn't this Mary's son? Is this son of Joseph? So Jesus couldn't do Miracles and signs and wonders to his own people because they was looking at him at the faith, I mean, at, at, his, at his flesh and not at his spirit. And so he couldn't do because what happened was the people looked at him and they didn't believe. So unbelief quenched it out. So he couldn't do many signs and wonders there. I'll show you another example. When he was there and it was a sick girl in the house and his disciples were in there and he left two disciples there and he had to kick everybody else out because the unbelief was stopping the healing of the miracle. Now, if Jesus had to do that, how is it that we look at each other and we deny the faith in each other? Because his unbelief stopped it. Amen? Amen. Everybody okay? Y'all getting this? This thing is real. Your unbelief can stop your miracles, your signs and wonders. Let's go to Psalms 40.
verse 1. Where it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the merry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Many people are going to see how you act. In your trials. Because that's when you, people are really going to see the real you. Is in your trials. You can't hear if you can't be still. That's going to say, I waited upon the Lord. That means you got to be still. You can't just say, Lord, I need, this, I need your help in this area. And say, okay, I'm, I'm done. I got to go. You got to wait to hear him. You got to wait. You can't hear if you can't trust. No trust, no hear. Amen? You trust him, you can hear him. And the time that he's ready to give it to you. Amen? And you'll hear nothing that means that he ain't got an answer for you yet. You wait upon it. It might take a year. It might take two years. But guess what? To him, that don't mean nothing. Time don't mean nothing to him. He just knows that he's preparing you for what you have asked for. So then when you do receive it, you'll be prepared to have it. Because he don't want you to take it and give it back to the devil. Amen? Because sometimes, if you beckon him long enough, he'll be saying, here, take it then! And then you stumble it. Because the word says that God will give you no more than you can handle. Amen? He'll, sometimes he'll give it to you because you're nagging him to death. He said, here. I love you, but you know, you're a little brat. <laughs> Figure this one out. Lord, why do you allow this to happen to me? I didn't allow it to happen to you. You did that to yourself. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 19. Verse 16, Matthew 19, verse 16. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which one's Jesus? Jesus knew what was in his heart. He said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven, and come follow me. <laughs> Don't rely. Don't rely on your gifts and talents. The only thing you should rely on is the Lord. Don't rely on your gift and talents. Those are his too. Amen. But rely on the Lord. Because if you rely on the Lord, then you can commit your works unto the Lord. And the like minus will come. Because now your thoughts will be established. But how can you do that if you're disconnected from him? 
But if you're in faith, you'll be connected to him so that you will be able to do according to his will. Because that's what we're, we're supposed to be into. We're supposed to be in his will, not of our own. Amen? That's going to be said, okay, I know it's all in your heart. Let me see you give, because this guy was wealthy. He said, let me see you give all this up and follow me. Because he don't even realize he would have had more. He would have had more. Because the Lord is not going to leave you naked. Only one that's going to leave you naked is the one that's come still, kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen? Let's go to Luke 9. Fifty-seven. Now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of all of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the, their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you. But let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his head hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We must put God first, and he will supply our needs. We have to put him first in everything we do, and he will supply it. That means if you, okay, you go, I mean, I had to go and bury my dad. But I didn't go there just to have fun and, and leave God out. I brought him with me. I went there to be a witness, you know, and I got out of there as fast as I could because I didn't need to be around all that demonic activity that is out there in the area where my dad lives at because there's a lot of demonic activity. And you know when you can feel the presence of evil. You ain't got to stay there. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Go rescue yourself. God didn't tell you to stay there. You're trying to be soulish and stay there. Oh, it's my people. No, 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 no. Get out of there. And do what you need to be. Do what you need to do. Amen. The Hebrews 12. I love my family, but wasn't called to stay with my family. I was called to do. The family of the kingdom of God. When souls. Seeing souls change. As other souls change, seeing my soul being changed. Because as you give, you're, give, you're getting. Because it's against the nature of the old man. The nature of the old man was get, 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 get. Get, 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 get. <laughs> How many of y'all know about the get? <laughs> the nature of the new man is to give, 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 and you'll receive your blessings from the Lord. You don't have to give your blessings from the same place that you're given. The Lord will supply your need wherever he sees need fit. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 2, 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by the great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily snares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Lay aside every burden. Anything that's burdensome, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Lay it aside. 
Because burdens can be burdensome. They can outweigh you. They can be a weight on your body. Trust me, it can bring you to a place you don't want to do nothing. If you, 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 you ever had, had a heaviness at times in your life where you just couldn't get out of bed? It's just that it seemed like it was hindering you from even wanting to eat. Yeah. And don't forget, the enemy knows where you fall short at. And he will try to use anything he can to bring you back to those areas. He's good at it. Amen. So when you see Philip Burnley come, praise the Lord! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hey, he's, he scream that thing off of you. Amen. Get that off of me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Get it off of me. Yeah, that's right. Let hell come get off of you, get off of you and go back. Uh, James 3. Asking the pastor, you always, you always hear him say, Hallelujah! He just took something off of him. <laughs> Hallelujah! Huh? Yeah. It's a good thing. We do have weapons. It's a good thing. All right, Romans. No, where are we at? Oh, I'm there. Okay, everybody else there? All right. James 3 says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. So how great a farce a little fire mm. kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by what? Hell. Hallelujah! Now you're changing your tongue. Glory! Praise you, Lord. Changing your tongue instead of rocka snacka rocka knocker. No, you know the words I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. God be the glory. Even the song. Sing to him. It's something different. Because the enemy wants to bring you to the old place, the old dwelling place. For every kind of beast and birds and reptiles and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. With it will bless our God and Father, and with it curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. So as we curse in men, we're cursing the thing that God created. That's because we have to bless them instead of curse them. God made them. Amen. You got to remember, when we was in the world, people talked about us. They didn't think that we would come out of our old man. But for God's grace and his mercy, he called us. And we came out. Now they see something new. I never thought they would ever get out of there. But you have to stay connected to stay new. If you're not staying connected, you'll go back to the old. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. Who is wise and understand among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done and the meekness of wisdom. And what is wisdom? God's word. Amen? Amen. Wisdom is God's word. All right, let's 
False images bring fear that hinders your spirit. False images. You got to remember that. Enemies always stand there. And as he brings that, guess what he does? He'll make it speak out your mouth. And as it speak out your mouth, it comes back to your ears. As it comes back to your ears, it goes back to your heart. As it goes back to your heart, it goes back to the thought pattern. And it cycles all over again. Over and over. Camera. He always got a movie camera for you. Always trying to get you. So that's when we have to grab. This is what Pastor always says, and I believe it all the way. You got to grab on to him as he grabs hold to you. You got to grab on to Christ. You got to stay there. And hold them, despite your failures. You're going to make some failures. But don't stay there. Get your butt up and keep moving. Because as you stay there, you lose. Amen? What are people going to say about me, though? Don't, who cares? It's what he says about you. He's the one that called you. Fulfill it, complete it, and let it be done. Everybody in this room was called for this. This is for the family. I know that everybody in here is family. This is for the family. God had to set you up and brought you in here. To hear this, because he knows that you've been called for this, and each and every one. So when you look at your other brother and you start talking about him, he was called for it too. Amen. Amen. So bless them, don't curse them, and just keep them moving so that you don't fall into that trap. Because the word says that when you see somebody fall and stumble and you laugh at them, he said, beware of that because it might, it might turn around and come to you. That thing, that thing will hear, oh, okay. <laughs> and turn around and say, I'm coming at you. <laughs> Romans 7, verse 18. Verse 18, it says, But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me that is in the, my flesh nothing good dwells, for the will is present with me. But how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will do I do not do, but the evil I will not do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find them a, then a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do, this is a tongue twister, to do good. <laughs> For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members. Warn against the law of the my what? The mind of Christ. And bringing me into captivity to the law and sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. We must come up and praise so we can hear and see. When the flood comes, so we must endure through it, so we can see the promise of God on the other side. Let me say that again. We must come up and sin. We must come up and praise. Remember, hallelujah, praise you, God be the glory, the, so we can hear and see. So as you're doing that, now you can hear. Now you can see. You can see as God wants you to see. 
Because as you're walking around and bound up, you can't see nothing but God. So you only see what the flesh sees. And that's what the, then the flesh, is, flesh talks good too, don't it? Yeah, you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it continues. Man, yeah, I'll say it. Yeah, my flesh was going off yesterday. And I had to say, shut up, flesh. Shut up. And I would have to stop and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I had to continually do it. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Until it broke. Because just one time ain't going to do it. You got to do it till it broke, till you don't remember it no more. That's the fight. And then you can move forward and everything will be well. Within you, as the word says, is well within my soul. My soul is my mind, will, and emotions. Amen? We must, yeah, I already said that. Let's go to Romans 8. I got one more after this. Romans 8. Yeah, my flesh wanted to complain, complain. You know, marriages takes two to become one. And I wanted to complain and complain. Now, my wife didn't hear all this. <laughs> but my words were coming out, and I had to stop them because I knew that was not the right things of me saying. And I had to get that behind me so that the right words would come forth. Because the enemy always wanted to set us up. He wanted to see division within the home, division within the body of Christ. Because if the house divided, it can't stand. Amen? But as yours, it could become into one and work out the indifferences and get into the oneness of it, you become one flesh. And nothing can come against it because God will be the center of it all. As a matter of fact, he'll be the head of it and keep it together. That's come a three coils hard to break. Amen? Romans 8, 31. And then shall we say to these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him from us, for us all, how shall he not with him oh, ooh, excuse me, also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who what? So who's going to come against God's elect? Are we God's elect? So who can come against us? As long as you have the mind of Christ, you no weapon form against you can prosper. You just keep your mind on Christ and you'll be okay. No, you better be okay. you be better than okay. You be blessed. Amen. Amen. Who is he who c condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As is written, for your sake, we all killed all day long. We are all counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ. Amen? Amen. Jesus, our Lord, nothing shall separate us if you know who your true identity is, if you remember the call, if you remember your identity, if you remember your purpose. You will not be separated. You'll fight to keep yourself connected, despite of how you feel. Because your feelings are going to lie to you anyhow. 
They always do. First Thessalonians, last one. First Thessalonians 5. Verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Be at peace among yourselves. Be at peace among yourselves. You can't give peace if you don't have it. Amen. Amen? Now we exhort you, brothers, warn those who are unruly, comfort and faint-hearted. Uphold the weak. Be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue that what is good, both for yourself and for all. Rejoice always. Sometimes, no, always. Okay, hallelujah. Amen. Pray without ceasing. And everything, give thanks for this is the will. This is the will. This is the will. This is the will. This is the will of God. This is the will. And you know how he said it's in God, right? Then he says, in Christ. That's the anointing. That breaks. So the anointing will give you the power to do these things as you cooperate with it. Because you understand something. The Holy Spirit leads you to what? All truth. Right? So he's going to tell you, "Uh uh-uh, don't do it. If you hear him, you'll go, ah, no, forget it. What what were you going to say? Don't worry about nothing. Nothing. Don't go and let the flesh say, go ahead, tell him. Tell him what you want to say. (laughs) But be submissive to the Holy Spirit. It'll bring you peace. Amen? Amen. So let's say that again. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Amen. Amen. Father, we come together right now, Lord. We thank you for what you have did for us and called us in this beginning. Lord, I ask that as we go forward, Lord, that you will complete us to fulfill the calling, that we become faithful and chosen in the, the works that you have for us, Lord. Not only in the works that we do for others, Lord, but also the works that we do to keep your presence, the fight for you, and come after you, and have your presence in our homes, within our hearts, within our mind, spirit, soul, and body. So, Lord, we thank you for what you are doing here, and I ask that your word will touch each and every heart in this place, and that it will grow and become bountiful in each and every person, that they be able to be a giver of your spirit to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.